enough for October. Into the evening on Saturday, we'll see clear spells across much of England and Wales and light winds with that ridge of high pressure still holding firm. Under those clear spells, temperatures falling away, but for Scotland and Northern Ireland, a milder night because it's going to turn increasingly breezy and the cloud will build. In fact, for the Western Isles, the risk of gales or even severe gales as we start off Sunday, heavy rain pushing through, and then an unsettled day expected for Scotland and Northern Ireland, a spell of wind and heavy rain for a time. And that pushes into the far north of Wales and northern England by the end of the afternoon. But further south, it stays largely dry and bright with some sunshine. Monday looks drier and brighter for many, likewise for Tuesday. Weekday afternoons on GB News, we've got the whole of the UK covered. From 12 to 3, it's GB News Day with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Gloria De Piero. You'll get the very latest on everything that's been going on across our great nation. And from 3 till 6, watch out for GB News Live with me, Patrick Christie. I'm not here to mess around with all the biggest topics and guests. You will always be up to date. GB News Day and GB News Live from 12pm. Only on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB Plus Digital Radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune in apps. On your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of the People's Channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness, me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11pm, seven nights a week. Yes, hello everybody, welcome to Friday Night Feast. It's that time of the week where you settle down, put your feet up, grab a snack, grab your nuts for all I care. Forget about the cares of the working week. We've got a spectacular for you for the next two hours lined up. Loads of great chat, loads of great gags as well. Not many of them coming from me, of course. This, of course, is Friday Night Feast. Welcome along to the show, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Two hours of fun, mayhem, chaos, carnage, whatever you want to call it. That's what's coming your way. Here is what we've got coming up between now and 9pm. Blackouts, don't worry, it gets lighter. Blackouts could be on the way this winter, but are they really that bad? We'll be debating that tonight. Challenge Christie's this week is a... Um, well, it's a little bit different. It's the end of my career, let's be honest with you, because uh, we've been set a challenge by one of you lovely viewers that will be happening live on air. And, um, I mean, it's awful. So, uh, good luck with that. And don't forget, of course, about our Dog of the Week. That's right. Yes, our Dog of the Week feature where we beg you, and we are begging you at this point, to please rehome one of these dogs. Today we have the lovely Elle, and I just know that one of our wonderful, generous viewers will be able to find her a forever home. Look, at now I'm not quite sure which one's which, but that'll become obvious later. Plus, I'll meet the man who combined his passions for weightlifting and unicycling to reach the Guinness Book of World Records. We'll take a look inside the UK's smallest off-licence as well. And, of course, we'll be catching up on some weird and wonderful stories from all across the UK with Round Your Parts, you heard. First, though, let's get the latest headlines with Tamsin.
Patrick, thank you and good evening. Here's the latest from the GB Newsroom. The Minister for Trade Policy, Connor Byrne, says he will fully cooperate with an investigation into allegations of inappropriate behaviour made against him. His comments come after he was sacked from the government after a complaint of serious misconduct earlier this week. The MP has had the party whip suspended whilst an investigation takes place. A spokesperson for Number 10 says the Prime Minister has been clear that the highest standards in public life must be upheld. The UK and Ireland have said they'll work towards resolving the stalemate over the Northern Ireland Protocol. Following a meeting of the British-Irish Intergovernmental Conference in London, both parties reaffirmed their commitment to reinstate an executive at Stormont by October the 28th. Northern Ireland Secretary Chris Heaton-Harris stressed the importance of an executive being formed. A man armed with a knife has been shot dead by armed officers in a police station car park in Derby. Derbyshire Constabulary said officers were sent to the scene just before 10 this morning. The Independent Office for Police Conduct has been informed. Kate Maynell, the Deputy Chief Constable of Derbyshire Police, says inquiries are ongoing. During the incident, a window was smashed at the police station. Armed officers were sent to the scene and a police firearm was then discharged. No officers, staff or other members of public were injured during the incident. It is not believed to be a link to counter-terrorism at this time. However, inquiries are ongoing. As you can see, a cordon is in place and Ascot Drive is currently closed and is likely to remain so while the investigation continues. The United Nations has passed a motion to investigate alleged human rights abuses in Russia. Nearly 50 countries brought the motion to appoint an independent expert, including Britain. The Human Rights Council accused Moscow of creating a climate of fear through repression and violence, but... Russia says the motion contains false allegations. It's the first time an expert has been appointed to investigate the rights record of a permanent member of the Security Council. Meanwhile, the head of the UN nuclear watchdog will travel to Russia early next week for talks on setting up a protection zone around the Russian-occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The news comes after shelling yesterday damaged a power line to one of the reactors at the plant, the largest in Europe. Four International Atomic Energy Agency staff have also gone to the plant to provide support to the protection zone once it's agreed. TV, online and DAB Plus Radio, this is GB News. Now it's back to Patrick. Welcome to Friday Night Feast, everybody. Right, let's get stuck straight in, shall we? So, I think it should be illegal for nurses to go on strike. It should be a criminal offence. Why? Well, for one very simple reason. If nurses go on strike, then people will die. And we can't allow that, can we? There is really only one issue at play here. It's not about how much nurses are paid. It's not about whether or not they're paid enough to do their job. It's about whether or not nurses going on strike will lead to people dying. And it obviously will. I think it's morally unconscionable for nurses to go on strike. Nurses in the UK take a pledge, the Nightingale Pledge, apparently. That pledge clearly states, and I'm quoting now, I solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to pass my life in purity and to practice my profession faithfully. I will abstain from whatever deleterious and mischievous as a missioner of health, I will dedicate myself to devoted service to human welfare. That's out of the way. So, going on strike clearly goes against that pledge, in my view. How does not helping to make people better help human welfare? I would also argue that going on strike over pay is a little bit mischievous, if you ask me, because nurses do a tremendous job, a difficult job. I've never saved anyone's life. In a time of crisis, you wouldn't want me. I think that's pretty clear, so don't get me wrong, right? At times, it's an incredibly grim job as well. I've never saved a life and I am in awe of what nurses do to be there for people and their loved ones in their time of need. But they have had two pay rises in two years. A rise of 3% in July 2021 and a rise of 4.5% in July 2022. The average salary of a nurse is about 32 grand. You simply cannot go on strike over pay 
when you've had two pay rises in two years. And if they're not happy with their pay rise, they should take it up with their union, not us. Talking of unions, this really is the point. How on earth do the Royal College of Nursing bigwigs look themselves in the mirror? They clearly feel that they did a bad job negotiating the pay rises. Now they're trying to save face by, in my opinion anyway, playing roulette with people's lives. Train workers or bus drivers going on strike, that's one thing, but nurses is a different thing altogether. They say that their strike will only affect non-urgent care, so that's stuff that's not life-threatening right now, heart attacks. But those things can become life-threatening for patients very, very quickly, can't they? When they go on strike, perhaps somebody won't get a lump checked or a wound might become infected and they get sepsis, for example. Now, I can understand that nurses want more pay, and I'm quite sympathetic towards that, don't get me wrong. I can understand that they may be struggling with the cost of living crisis, absolutely. But so is everybody else. We did lock this country down during COVID to protect the NHS, and that cost people jobs, money, livelihoods. Does the taxpayer really have to fork out now for more money for nurses in the middle of this cost of living crisis? It's a deeply uncomfortable thing to say. Because nurses literally save lives and they are amazing people, but right now, in the current time that we live in, I think they're paid enough for what they do. And if they vote to strike, I think they'll have blood on their hands. Right, there's lots of eye-rolling taking place here, which is... Uh, I'm going to introduce my panel in a little bit, don't worry. We're going to get stuck into that. We're going to get stuck... It gets lighter, it gets lighter. <laughs> we give away a dog later. We give away a dog. Anyway, right, I'm joined now... Not yet. I'm joined now by nurse and writer Sarah Jane Palmer to discuss this. Sarah, thank you very much. Twice in two days. I must be doing something right. OK, so, <laughs> yeah. two issues here. Firstly, are nurses paid enough for what they do? Um, I think they're paid quite a lot of money, really, for what they do. And, well, I think it's reasonable. And um, at the moment, at the top of band five, you'd get about £38,000 if you're in London. So um, I think that's quite a good salary. And I think if they're going to raise it by 5%, then that's quite generous, considering a lot of people won't get a rise by um, anything at all. Um, and as you said, in the in the pandemic, a lot of people lost their jobs altogether and that was to protect the NHS. So I just think there's it's a lot to be grateful though, for I, right now, really. Yeah, it, it's difficult though, isn't it? Because obviously you've heard what I've just had to say, but at the same time, if we were to knock this country down and start again, right, you would pay people whose job it is to save lives a lot more money, right? That's the, the, the natural order of things would work out. Yeah. But yeah. we're not there, are we, right? We are in no. a reality. And the reality at the minute, as far as I'm concerned anyway, and as a, as a former nurse yourself, I'm keen to get your views on it, is I think right now we shouldn't give nurses a pay rise given the fact that they've had two pay rises in two years. And if they walk out, people will die, won't they? Yeah, absolutely. I think it poses a huge risk because there'll be tens of thousands of people that needed a small procedure done to check for cancer, for example, or or other things, like you've said, mentioned wounds. And there's loads of things that will be missed on that one day all across the country. And I just don't think strike action is morally right. It's just not the right thing to do. As a nurse, you sign up to the NMC Code of Conduct um, and you take that pledge that you read out and you promise to do no harm. And I think a strike would absolutely do a lot of harm to thousands of people. So even though it would be great to have some more money, I think still it's been quite generous that nurses have had 15% extra in the last few years and then they're still being offered about 5% now. So, you know, I think... It, I, I just don't think it, the time is now to, yes, when you, to when say you, that a strike would be yeah. needed. When you were a nurse, right, were you particularly popular with your views on the ward? <laughs> um, oh... I don't know, really. I suppose sometimes I would make it known, you know. If I thought something was unfair, then I would make it known. And I, w I wasn't really one to fit in with a group of sort of, you always get some bitchy people that are in nursing and they sort of congregate together as a clique. And I wasn't really a part of that. And sometimes they could be slightly more lazy and things like that. I think I, I would just um, be quite clear with what I thought, but I was always really friendly and... You know, I worked really hard, so I thought that was the main thing as well. 
really. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I suppose, <laughs> our nurses are a bit trapped, right? So, I mean, look, for what it's worth, I don't back a train strike either, apart from the bloke who gave me a fine for not having my rail card on me the other day. He can never go to work again, as far as I'm concerned. But... <laughs> If nurses go on strike, people will die. We've established that. Now, now they say that, you know, non-urgent care won't be affected. Fine. But look, realistically, it's not great for the nation's health, is it? If nurses go on strike. Are they a bit trapped mm -hmm. then? Because if they, if they do feel as though that their pay isn't good enough, I suppose the natural response is to go on strike. But they can't really, can they? Because they'll kill people no. while people will die. I yeah. Phrase that. yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's morally reprehensible. I just don't think that it's something that should even be considered. And I'm surprised um, if they are allowed to do this. I'm, I'm quite shocked by, by the idea of what, that. One I of think the things they're saying, wrong. Sarah, sorry, one of the things they're saying is that unless pay goes up, right, we're not going to be able to recruit enough nurses and more nurses are going to leave. OK, so yeah. is it just that maybe society has changed and younger people coming up have thought, well, for that amount of money, I don't have to wipe people's bottoms? I think, um, so, well, I think, do, do you mean as in they're offering more money and well, no, they're hoping in, that... I don't, to really think, I don't really think that they necessarily should be paid more, but what I am saying is it can be a grim job, surely. And so, by definition, yeah. it must be hard to attract people. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It can be difficult, and I think it's, it's a very demanding role. But I think also that even if you got a few extra thousand pounds, that it wouldn't really make much difference. And really, it's a lot about the culture. There's a toxic culture, and there can be issues with bullying and things, and... Um, it, it's more about changing the whole system. And I think the management as well is something that's really questionable. And I think they really need to look at the, the system they have in place for managing the NHS because there's a lot of money that's wasted on unnecessary um, managers. Can you talk and... to me a bit more about this, Sarah? Sorry, just last question to you, if that's all right, because I have spoken a bit in my time here about NHS wastage, the amount of money that we do give to the NHS, can it be used better? But because I don't work in the NHS, right, I basically just look at how much they spend on loo roll and stuff like that. But what is the wastage? Can you just educate me? I would say there are a lot of um, senior staff members uh, like Band 8 managers and even Band 7 managers that have been in their role so long and they're at the top of their band because bearing in mind there's an incremental increase every single year for nurses anyway. It's never a stagnant pay. They, they always get a, quite a lot of money. So someone at the top of Band 7 is on about 50 grand a year and yes. um, they could be working from home a lot of the time and saying that they're managing things but really all of the managers are constantly on meetings on online, sometimes, often from home, and it's just a waste of money. And I think there's diversity managers and things that, that those managers just aren't necessary. <laughs> so okay, there's, Sarah, look, there's that. Thank you very much. Great. Look, it's great to have you on the show. Sarah Jane Palmer yeah, there, a you. former nurse and now a writer as well, discussing this nurses pay rise or strike or where do you stand on this? GBviews at gbnews.uk. Don't be shy, but with me. Oh, also, sorry, apparently I have to apologise for... If you heard any bad language, which is um, the same word that you would use to describe a female dog, who we're giving away later... No, you've got to rehome them. In Dog of the Week! That's right, tune in for that. But sorry about saying it out of context, not me, her. Anyway, with me throughout the show tonight, I'm delighted to welcome the comedians, Charmaine Davies and Diane Spencer. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> There's too much estrogen here for me. <laughs> You're welcome. Hopefully you'll make the change. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite easy these days. Right, OK, now, you were shaking your head yeah. during that nurse's thing. Yeah. But she's a nurse, so right. how do you disagree with her? Oh, like this. No. Um, that's how you nurse's disagree strike. with someone. Well, I... Right, I have literally just... Yeah. Like, two weeks ago, I had a hernia operation. OK. Yeah, and I've still got uh, my wee little thing. I'm technically not supposed to be at work, but self-employed. This, this, <laughs> self this is many things that is not work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and there were many, many people who were part of that day. Many people from my arrival to me being visited by people to I had one person talk to me about um, the anaesthesia. I had one person mm. come in with a felt tip pen and literally so colouring my belly button. It's a bloated system, is what you're saying. It's a bloated system. That is not what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, you have twisted my words, Patrick. I'm just saying that um, there were a lot of people there, but yeah, it, my my operation was a minor thing. But if they had gone on strike 
and those people weren't there, then I'd have turned up at the hospital. You'd have to have gassed yourself. I don't know. What, what job would I have had to do? Would I be the person colouring in my belly button? I could have done that. By the way, can I just say, on, on that <laughs> note, so I've got, um, I've got an arthritic finger. I don't mind everyone seeing this now. It looks like the, the hunchback of Notre Dame, yes. OK. And it, anyway, so I had an operation on this, right? And so it was broken badly, like it was knocked out, like it was just wonky, OK? And they drew, when I had to get it corrected, they drew in felt tip this finger. And I was like, well, I'd hope that after <laughs> like seven years of medical training, right, you could tell which finger is the one that's broken. But anyway, you were also shaking your head a little bit. Do you think I'm deeply offensive and should be cancelled? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just scrap this programme so right, now. So, right so, now. so go on, talk to me. Right, so how much would you pay a nurse? Well, I, is, is, I, do you know... I think they do an amazing job. And I, just recently, like you, actually, two weeks ago, I had a little mm. operation. Bizarre. Weird. Oh, I know. How weird is that? I won't ask And I was. can't... No, don't. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you in the break. Um, but we, the, the nurses that looked after me, there were loads of different nurses mm. from yeah, taking, you know, talking to you about the people. procedure and this, that and mm. the other. And they go above and beyond mm. uh, that their call of duty. And yeah. then you've got footballers paid well, yeah. millions yeah. and trillions of pounds you just can't to put the ball. Do you that. Do, but then you can't... But what do you do then? Do you smash the size? Because people go, oh, pay them the same as politicians. Well, yeah, I get if we were starting again, yes, we probably would do that, but we're not there, are we? No, but they, 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 you know, during COVID, they went, they were working every single hour. They were really pushed to the limit. Mm. Nurses, really pushed. We thought they were national heroes. We clapped for them every Thursday night mm. or whatever it was. And then they got a 2% increase, which was a bit of a slap in the face, well, really. They, yeah, OK, fair. I mean, they got a 3%, I don't like to, we're all friends here, but they got a 3% increase <laughs> in July 2021 and a 4.5% increase in July. 2022, look, it's... Right now, right mm -hmm. now, if nurses went on strike, people would... Die. They would die, yes, right? Otherwise, die. what's the point of yeah. nurses, No, right? they would so, die. But how so... are they going to make their point? How are they going to stand up for themselves and fight for what they want? See, without... that's what we've got to workshop. Mm -hmm. So, what were... What do you do without killing people? Well, what do you do? So, all right, so, A, we want to avoid killing people, but B, Desperate. we need to... they have a lot of bank <gasps> staff. They do have agency Go on. staff. Oh, she's got it. She's so got the it. And NHS staff, and they have agency staff. So, I'm sure the agency staff would come in to replace the NHS staff. No. Well, they went on well, then why do we need... That would be yeah. terrible, though. But it would be terrible, would be because like then they P would just and take their job. the whole NHS. No, yeah. like, like you, right, when they scribble on you, they drew your little finger, right? Yeah. What if every time you woke up from an operation, it's it, somebody had written on you in a Sharpie, give us a pay rise? Like, give us a pay rise. <laughs> a people. brutal marketing scheme <laughs> that involves... You're really twisted. <laughs> yeah. That's very weird. Well, it's, well, no, but it's interesting. So, it would I work. Mean, what would you pay a nurse? I don't know what nurse we're talking about. Like, there's so many nurses who do so many different things. Mm, you yeah. can't just, like, yeah. throw so a the dart starting, in the board. So the starting salary... So when you right. go in early doors, right, when you're right. kind of a ground-level nurse, right, you start on about 25 grand, 27 right. grand, and you can work your way up to about 55 grand. The average, therefore, is around 32 grand. OK, so... Right. I mean, my first job was 15 grand. But that was about 30 years My first years ago. job. No, yes, it wasn't. But, yes, very but young, I'm a child. No, but, but so my <laughs> point is, I get if you're living in London, that's catastrophic. Yeah. So, well, this is it. The price, the, the, it, it's, the, the cost of living is catastrophic. I mean, electric, gas, everything like this. And if you've got a family, 35 grand is going to go nowhere. Mm. Mm. Is it, really? Okay. If you're a nurse. And, and the thing is, it's not just at nine to five, is it? You, you may be rusted to do nine to well, five, I imagine it's but not. it'll be hours and hours and hours. Yeah, I do want to make the point, by the way, that, like, look, we're having this discussion about whether or not I think it's right for nurses to go on strike because they're thinking about maybe going on strike. And I would rather that they didn't because yeah. if one of my loved ones got ill, right, we'd need a nurse, OK? I do, however, massively appreciate nurses <laughs> at the same time. We do need nurses, so it's quite a difficult topic, right? But, you know, if we're being... Well, if I'm being, anyway, very, very, very black and white about it. Right now, just specifically right now, I don't think we've got the money. Given the fact that, you know, we're going to have to, presumably, and if we want trains, give them a pay rise as well. Yeah. Everyone, a pay, everyone wants a pay rise. Teachers the trains don't next. even run properly, even when they get a pay rise. Thank you very much. <laughs> they don't give them a pay rise. I've tried. Not give them a pay rise until they can I actually work the structure that runs properly. I worked out It once. makes me so cross. I went, back, I went home to visit my mum and dad in Cheshire. And it would have been quicker for me to have walked yeah. back to Euston than it would have been to get on the Avanti West Coast. Yeah, line. if they right. can actually run a train 
system that works. I can't run it never, I never. <laughs> right, moving on. Friday Night Feast will be nothing without you lot watching out there. So please get in touch. Come on, don't be shy. Email me, gbviews at gbnews.uk. You can message me on Twitter as well, at gbnews. We'll get some of your messages later in the show. But next, it's time for our big debate. Blackout. Are they really that bad, like a candle reader bunch? Stop it, you again. What? Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what the British public think. <laughs> I think we unfortunately have to just manage the situation the best we can. Yeah, I think it, everyone's probably cutting back and turning off the lights and the electrical switches. So we just have to do the best we can to keep our cost down and help the country get through this difficult time. Crazy. I mean, I grew up in South Africa where they have energy blackouts all the time. It feels like a third world country. Uh, this feels crazy you know, that it could happen here. If there's no supply available, if there's a dearth of supply, I think we'll have to look out for some alternates, possible alternates. Uh, at the same time, I, I think we still have time for winter is coming. Uh, so if, if we are able to find some alternate options, uh, maybe start rationalizing the supply right now or find uh, other sources from where we can get the supply, then that would be great. It's pretty um, depressing, isn't it, in this day and age when we're talking about 1970s type things happening again, that we don't have enough um, oil to keep the lights on. It's shocking, actually. I think it's an absolute disgrace. I think we have to be prepared for it. You can't, on the one hand, say you support Ukraine and then say how terrible we're going to have uh, blackouts. You know, I, I think, uh, contrary to, again, to uh, mistrust, I, I, I think we all have to share the, uh, the, the burden, as it were, and what people are not happy about clearly is that the burden is shared disproportionately by people with lower incomes. So if we have energy blackouts, if, it's an if, um, then so be it. But, you know, equally we have to bear in mind the disproportionate effect on, different, on, on people with different levels of income. I would need more information in regards to how that impacts like emergency services and stuff like that. I work in a hospital setting, so I would assume, hopefully, that that wouldn't impact anything. But uh, to be able to uh, determine and separate the hospital systems from the main systems uh, seems like there would be a lot of room for errors and a risk for patient safety and things like that. Um, and it sounds just very World war -esque Uh So, I mean, something has to be done, but I don't know what the solution is. I feel that basically we've realised for a number of years that we haven't been investing in our energy infrastructure and therefore shouldn't come as a surprise when there's a hiccup that ultimately... Weekday afternoons on GB News, we've got the whole of the UK covered. From 12 to 3, it's GB News Day with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Gloria De Piero. You'll get the very latest on everything that's been going on across our great nation. And from 3 till 6, watch out for GB News Live with me, Patrick Christie. I'm not here to mess around with all the biggest topics and guests. You will always be up to date. GB News Day and GB News Live from 12 p.m. Only on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB Plus Digital Radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune in apps. On your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of the People's Channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. 
So join us, 11 p.m., seven nights a week. Welcome back to Friday Night Feast. Now, are we facing blackouts this winter? Do you care? This headline appeared on Sky News this week. Will food go off in the fridge? <laughs> and will my pet fish survive? <laughs> How to prepare for a blackout? Um, don't be an idiot. Like, that's, that's the thing. Yeah, yes, your pet fish, yes, your pet fish will survive if you feed it, right? Anyway, right. Yes, so Prime Minister Liz Truss will not rule out the possibility of blackouts this winter if there is an energy crisis. But would blackouts really be such a disaster? I think they might be quite romantic. We have been survived worse things, haven't we? We've survived worse things, anyway. There was a three-day week in the 70s, I believe in the 70s as well. People weren't even digging graves, so, you know, that was something. Joining me now to discuss this is environmental researcher Laurie Laybourne, columnist Ali Mirage, and why not? We've also got UKIP, former UKIP leader Henry Bolton as well. Right, OK, so I am acutely aware, uh, Laurie, that you are now uh, catastrophically outnumbered. So I will start with you, but try to keep it brief. Um, are blackouts that bad, really? I mean, they would be really disruptive, right? Like, there are systems, backup systems for hospitals and things that would mean that critical care is not stopped during a backout but it would it would be hugely disruptive right it would be very bad for industry it would be bad for people with particular requirements in their homes and so on you know the the 1970s aren't necessarily remembered as a as a fun happy go lucky no. time when we were experiencing those blackouts you know no that's true and also fashion was awful henry can i just say i've just clocked the fact that you're wearing a tux what's going on <laughs> especially for you patrick Fantastic. Yeah, good stuff. OK, right. So uh, might as well start with you now, Henry, again. So uh, blackouts, uh, I mean, are they that bad? Do people need to just kind of, you know, tighten their belts, get on with it, light a candle, read a book? Yeah, I'm a former military bloke, Patrick, as you know. Uh, yeah, the, the seven, I remember the 70s as well. I'm that old. And I actually quite enjoyed it, although I was a kid at the time. I'm sure it was far more of a pain for my parents. But look, you know, Generations have problems and challenges. We are, whether we agree with it, whether we like it or whether we not, we don't. We are in Europe at war. It is the largest conflict in, on the European continent since World War II. And because of, frankly, stupid policy decisions made by European member states and to an extent by the UK in a different manner in terms of our storage and privatisation of the infrastructure and so on, because of those absolutely mad and totally optimistic policies that were, were enacted then, we're now in a situation where we are vulnerable to what Putin okay. does. And we are indirectly at war with Putin. So, look, you know, it's right. not about government policy as such. It's, and, and, yes, we can tighten our boat belts. It needs a little bit of the blitz spirit. OK, all right, Ali, uh, I'll throw over to you now. Ali Mirage, is he really there or is it eight? Yeah, I imagine you get that a lot. Um, so, regardless of whether or not this is anything to do with Liz Truss or, indeed, anything to do with this country, i.e. there's a war on, the fact is, if Liz Truss is in charge when the lights go off, it's a bad look, isn't it, Ali? Well, well, to be honest with you, uh, Patrick, I'm surprised we're having this debate at all because Liz Truss said in a uh, final leadership hustings in Wembley Arena, and I was there when asked the pointed question, will there be blackouts this winter? The answer was no. Yeah, so, I was there when I she mean, told me I was going to pay less tax in, as well. Though, it, it, so so, so according, to, according to some ministers, in Liz we trust, I mean, is this another U-turn? What's going on here? Suddenly, now we're talking about blackouts. Look, the point was, she should have never said that. You can't look at the future. She set up a hostage to fortune. National Grid has come out and said that unless we start looking at the demand side of energy and trying to actually uh, use energy in a more intelligent way, the risk of blackouts is going to increase. Therefore, act now. Now, on the back okay. of this, Jacob Rees-Mogg signed off 15 million uh, to actually spend on educating the public about it, which, the, which uh, number 10 is vetoed. Why? It makes no sense at all. We should be okay, acting uh, now. Laurie, I'll lob it back over your way. Do you think this is the final nail in the coffin for the big net zero agenda? No, I don't think so, because that agenda um, argues for, for example, more insulation. And if we'd been insulating homes over the last 10 to 12 years, instead of getting rid of the green crap like Cameron 
uh, said all those years ago, then we would be in a much less insecure place right now. In fact, the figures show that if we had uh, not got rid of that green crap, we would well, uh, probably have about... I mean, to be fair, if we'd have fracked the living heck out of the north of England and also built more nuclear plants, we would also be in a better situation there, Laurie, wouldn't we? But go on, Laurie, carry on. I interrupt you. I was rude. But no, no, no worries at all. I mean, that's just, it's not true about the fracking, though, because that's not how energy markets work. And it's also not how the geology of the UK works either. So it would have been very difficult for us to actually have any security supply with gas. It's a regional, international market across Europe. So the price would still be very high. If we'd use less energy, so I strongly agree with what Ali was saying, if we'd been much more intelligent about our how we demand electricity, we insulated, we're much more intelligent about how we use the stuff at homes, then we wouldn't be in this bad position. But this is all, this, this is all yeah. shoulda, woulda, coulda, yeah. right? We, we are where we are, as they say in middle management, right? We are where we are, OK? And so, actually, whether or not the lights go off is is, is quite a big thing. H Henry, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it back to you now and work my way back mm -hmm. down the line. Henry, would it be that awful for our economy? Because the thing is, right, OK, look, I can tolerate the lights not coming on in my pokey little flat, but businesses, people working from home, for example, I mean, it would cost our economy a lot of money, Henry. Yeah, it will cost some money. But, uh, you know, Patrick, sorry to tell you a little war story. I was a United Nations governor in Kosovo, and we had to ration the power supply to the people of Kosovo. And that included hospitals, it included businesses, it included schools and so on. And we had to do it. There simply wasn't enough to go around. And if, you, if you've got too much demand on the system and there's not that supply, then you actually cause massive physical damage to the, to the network. So you've got to avoid that okay. damage because otherwise you've got a longer term problem anyway. But anyway, oh, the right, Ali, is, Laurie, you can Dad, do it. You're itching, you can but just hold that thought. Yeah. Ali, protect, I'll throw to, Ali, I'll throw it to you. Now, I you wonder you, you your political commentator no, has on, Ali. Uh, no, I was going to just say, listen to me. I was just going right, to say that Henry makes political... a very good point. Sorry, sorry, Patrick, right. I don't want to interrupt. Yes, thank you very much. Henry's right. making a good point, right? Henry made the point about the fact that we are at war. We're in a proxy war with Russia. The whole reason why we're having this debate now is because the government didn't frame this properly. It didn't frame the cost of this war. I'm not saying we shouldn't support the Ukrainians. Of course the we should. But the government should have been open at the front about the fact that energy prices would go up and also there potentially could be problems with energy supply. It did neither of those things. And the reality is this is not a big debate about whether we should or shouldn't turn the lights off. Henry's right. It, it, we'll only turn the lights off if we've got no choice. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think I've got just enough time, given the fact that we've got two uh, people from, well, who aren't a rabid lefty like uh, Laurie. I've, uh, and uh, so I think I'll give the final <laughs> view. I'll give the Sorry, final view Laurie. to... Actually, three people, really, if you weigh it all up. Uh, Laurie, I'll give the final view to you. Uh, I think that's only fair. And Henry, I'll let you crack on with whatever cocktail party you're going to. And Ali, you can crack on as well. Laurie, do you think it's dangerous Thanks, territory mate. for for... Labour to make a massive deal about, you know, the idea that, oh, the lights might go off, under trust, the lights might go off, because then if they don't go off, then she's won, hasn't she? Maybe. I mean, you know, the, the Tories have been in charge now for 12 years. It wasn't hard to predict that there would be some kind of energy shock in the future, that maybe Putin would go beyond just the, the Crimea invasion in 2014. So, these are just massive strategic errors from a government that's underinvested in this country for years after years after years. And we should have been more secure, right? We, I take the point about Kosovo, but we're not Kosovo. We're Britain. We could have made the decisions to uh, invest in insulation, invest in security supply. That didn't happen. And the Conservative Party probably should be punished for it at the okay. ballot box. OK, uh, a range of views. There we go. That was environmental researcher Laurie Laybourne, columnist Ali Mirage and former UKIP leader Henry Bolton. Chaps, thank you very, very much. I enjoyed that. And actually, some much-needed testosterone, because I'm outnumbered in the studio here. <laughs> I can't move for women. Anyway, <laughs> right, OK, thank you very much. Right, uh, women, what do you think? Wow! <laughs> just Now let's just ask the other gender, because they're all just one lump. <laughs> OK, well, um, shall I represent the lump of you women? You do the woman stuff. No, go on, I, no, I, I, I love a candle, quite honestly. I, let me just say, I, I, I like a bit of ambiance. But there is a fine line between being romantic and then being satanic with all your candles out, quite honestly. <laughs> I, I, I love wow. a, I'm not saying... But then what about all these windmills? What are they for, these wind farms that we've got? Where are the, where's the energy being generated? Well, they're obviously there? not enough. No, but also, I used to go to India a lot 
And quite honestly, you'd be sitting in restaurants mm. and the power would just go. And there would be, be a blackout. And then they would just get on with it. A generator would kick in, mm. a candle would be lit, and it would be part of their life. Now, I'm not saying it should be part of our life, but it really is I think, I mean, it's, it's, not it, the end of the world, yeah, is it? I, I mean, to light a candle. Look, this is the thing. For right? a half so an hour. If it's out of our control, right, if this was literally just down to complete and utter incompetence, hear me out on this. If this was like, if there was no war on, right, and it right. was just, we were just having a chat about whether or not the lights were going to come on this winter, that would be absolutely bonkers, right? But there is a war on, and that has had an impact. And so, you know, is trust to blame for this? If um, yeah, I really liked what Ali said about yeah. how the communication's been really bad. It has been. Yeah, and I thought that was a, a very, very valid point. Like, the, the weird thing is, is that... A lot of people have adjusted the way that they live to suit uh, the things that we're told we're supposed to do. Well, so people but have... we live beyond our means as well, though. Yeah, right? yeah but people have smokeless fuel and things like that if they still have a fire, is my point. I a lot of people it. won't have fires anymore. A lot mm. of people will have um, central heating. A lot of people will have hobbies uh, and things that depend on electricity, like... Old people definitely need electricity. I'm sorry, well, but that, that, it, they're yeah. going to get cold, they're not fit, they're not active, they, they, they need the, the heat, they need mm. the lights. Yeah. Old people, definitely. And they, they will be the ones that suffer. You know, oh, yeah. People well, like I mean, that. old people get left behind left, right and centre in this country as well. But you can't that. boil a kettle. Like, you're there going, oh, oh I wouldn't so mind if my so flat... So what? I mean, I'm <laughs> sorry, but so what? You know, oh, oh no, I have can't a have a cup of tea at 10 p.m., which is obviously when the lights will go out. Or yeah, later yeah, that's what you're saying. It won't, it won't necessarily be 10 p.m. It's not like they're gonna have a time limit. Oh, the lights have got to go out now. I It'll reckon be, it's going to be worse. They than didn't that. have rolling blackouts in New York back in the 70s. I mean, I think every country has had mm. their time, and I do think, and I'm, I'm probably wrong. Mm. But I do think this is probably a lot of scaremongering as well. Yes, well, I can't help but feel that, cos actually, I, I'm not being funny, but, I mean, Liz Truss has met with EU leaders and hopefully mm. we can just keep the flipping lights on, you know? I mean, that would be nice, actually, wouldn't it? If the, if the entire might of all of Europe's world leaders can't figure out a way of making sure that we aren't presenting in the pitch black, right, then, I mean, well, we're doomed, aren't we? We are really? doomed. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> after the break, it will be time for Challenge Christie's... Oh, gosh, I'm dreading this. OK, so... Here's a question to get to you. We're doing a live challenge, by the way, which is why I'm dreading it. Here's a question to get you thinking in the meantime. Which subgenre of hip hop music yeah, originated in Chicago in the year 2010? Hammer, drill, insulated screwdriver. Okay, so there you go. Have a bang on that. I'll see you in two. Weekday afternoons on GB News, we've got the whole of the UK covered. From 12 to 3, it's GB News Day with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Gloria De Piero. You'll get the very latest on everything that's been going on across our great nation. And from 3 till 6, watch out for GB News Live with me, Patrick Christie. I'm not here to mess around with all the biggest topics and guests. You will always be up to date. GB News Day and GB News Live from 12pm. Only on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB Plus Digital Radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune in apps. On your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of the People's Channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11pm, seven nights a week.
Hello, I'm Aidan McGiven from the Met Office. Following Friday's lively weather, the wind, the rain, the showers, it's actually a fine start this weekend with sunny spells for most, but there is more wind and rain on the way. Another frontal system approaching, a deepening area of low pressure out in the Atlantic. Ahead of that, a ridge of high pressure builds in following Friday's active front, which still clears the southeast during Friday evening. But once that's gone, well, actually, the winds fall a bit lighter. We'll see clear spells in many places. Still a few showers into North Wales, northwest England, western Scotland, Northern Ireland. But elsewhere, with largely dry weather overnight and clear spells, lighter winds, temperatures in some sheltered spots around, say, parts of central England, east Wales, two to five Celsius. Nevertheless, a bright start to the day for many on Saturday. Still one or two showers for North Wales, northwest England during the morning. They tend to disappear into the afternoon, but they'll continue across the north of Northern Ireland and western Scotland through much of the day. Turning cloudier and breezier here, feeling cool, 12 to 14 Celsius. But elsewhere, long spells of sunshine, 16, 17, perhaps even 18 Celsius. So pleasant enough for October. Into the evening on Saturday, we'll see clear spells across much of England and Wales and light winds with that ridge of high pressure still holding firm. Under those clear spells, temperatures falling away. But for Scotland and Northern Ireland, a milder night because it's going to turn increasingly breezy and the cloud will build. In fact, for the Western Isles, the risk of gales or even severe gales as we start off Sunday, heavy rain pushing through and then an unsettled day expected for Scotland and Northern Ireland, a spell of wind and heavy rain for a time and that pushes into the far north of Wales and northern England by the end of the afternoon but further south it stays largely dry and bright with some sunshine. Monday looks drier and brighter for many, likewise for Tuesday. On Mark Dolan tonight, in my big opinion, monologue, Lawless Britain. With multiple stabbings in our great cities now a daily occurrence, it's time for the police to give up their obsession with so-called hate crime and deal with real crime. My Mark Meets guest is a top rock biographer who'll be talking about the Beatles, the Rolling Stones and Elton John. And in my take at 10, it's time to save our pubs, part of the community and part of our way of life. We must not lose them. Plus my all-star panel. See you at nine. Welcome back, everybody, to Friday Night Feast. Now, before the break, I asked you which sub-genre of hip-hop music originated in Chicago in the 2010s. Was it A, Hammer, B, Drill, C, Insulated Screwdriver? And the answer is, of course, B, Drill. Well, I wonder what I might be doing for Challenge Christie's this week. This is how my career ends, or at least what's left of it, anyway. So it's Challenge Christie's time. Now, if you are new to the programme, I am of the opinion that I can turn my hand to pretty much anything, mm -hmm. immediately excel at it. I'm pretty good, to be honest with you. I'm pretty good. In recent weeks, I've shown my prowess at kickboxing. I milked a cow last week, and also I became just the second man in history to foil penalty-taking maestro Matt Letizia. That's right, I saved a Letiz penalty. Anyway. As well as hopefully keeping you all entertained, I am also raising money for a very worthwhile cause. Back in April, I did train with the male strippers, the Dream Boys, and I took to it like a duck to water. Look at me go. There it is. The plan is now that at some time in the future, hopefully quite soon, that I'm going to perform live on stage with those lovely lads. And you can also donate, really, which is justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash challenge Christie's. I'm doing it for the mental health charity Mind. So far, you lovely, wonderful people have donated just shy of 22 and a half grand. Thank you very much, everybody who's given money. I know that times are tough at the minute, money-wise, so I really do appreciate it. Anything you can give, please do. It's justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash Challenge Christie's mind do a lot of brilliant work in society. I, I, you know, mental health is a massive issue, and suicide, actually, believe it or not, is the single biggest killer of men under the age of 45, which is shocking, really, isn't it? Well, without further dither and delay, I'm sure you can see a speaker there and a, and a mm -hmm. microphone here. I, this is this is how it ends, people. Having already conquered the worlds of sports, aviation, cow milking, it's time I showed the music world what they've been missing. That's right. So a viewer called Jessica 
has got in touch and challenged me to record a Friday Night Feast rap live during this show. And because, well, essentially I didn't have enough time to do anything else this week, I have now ended up having to do this. I can't rap, but thank you very much, Jessica. I will find out where you live. Here to help me accomplish this is the wonderful, and by the way, thank you so much, DJ and producer, it's Richie Vargas. Richie, how are you? I'm very well. Look, very can well. I just say thank you? Because <laughs> what people don't see is the amount of work this guy's gone to, right? So he's brought, he's, he's brought your own speakers. You've been here ages, right? Yeah, I've been setting up. Um, I've brought some beats for you. So what? we can pre-listen. Well, I was wondering about this, because obviously I can't rap. By the way, people, this is literally... I mean, what was left of my career now is, right. is done, right? This is, okay. this, is, this is how it ends. Welcome right. to the final ever episode of Friday Night Feast. But you have brought beats, what, for me to rap over? How's it going to work? So basically, uh, I'm going to play... I've bought six tracks for you, so I've bought a wide variety for oh. you. So basically, what's going to happen, I'm going to play each track, mm. and... It's really down to your taste. So whichever you like... Have you seen this time? I haven't got any taste. <laughs> yeah. uh, go whichever you like, we're going to go ahead with. So, so we're going to okay. follow your lead. So we're going to intro... So you'll play the tracks, we'll decide mm -hmm. which one we think people is, is the best one, and then shall I then just deliver the rap and then do you go away? My understanding mm -hmm. is then you go away mm -hmm. and you put whatever I rap mm -hmm. over whatever beat we've chosen. Yeah, basically. Yeah? So basically we're going to record the rap so we use a program to Acapella. record the rap. Or to the backing track, however you prefer. And then I go away okay. and I put it all together and we can come back later. And we have a number one. Basically. This is how we make our millions. Basically. OK, all right, OK. So shall we hear some of the... Well, actually, you know, I want to find out a bit about you first. So, mm -hmm. so how did you get into producing and music? And stuff? Um, I grew up in a musical environment. Um, my best friends were DJs. My brother was a DJ. Mm. So music has been around me all my life. Great. So I eventually fell into it. I didn't really necessarily want to do music when I was younger. I was into sports, things like basketball, football. But then, you know, music is subjective, so, mm. you know, I had a strong opinion. I don't like how that sounds. That sounds like this guy's better than that guy. So mm. I just said, you know what? I'm doing music. You're doing music? Yeah, I'm doing music. It was a calling. Yeah, basically. Fantastic. I woke up one morning and I was like, right, bing. Can I just say I'm so jealous of you? So I mm. did ballet until I was about four years old. My right. Mom was, my mum was right. a dancer and then worked at the airport. Terrible, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, can't sing, can't dance, can't act. So you know how if people can sing, dance and act, they're a triple threat? Yes. Right, so I'm yes. not a threat. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> do you want to play us some music then and I'll decide which one I'm going to butcher? Right, OK. So... So let's have it. Go on. Go Track on. one? Yep. Here we go. It's coming up. OK. It's quite solemn, that. Yeah. OK. So I quite like it, cos it's... Cos what I've... So I found out about this. This right. is great, by the way. Yeah. I found out about... Flipping heck. Um, <laughs> I found out about this earlier, and I, I wrote this in the changing room just right. before I came on out. OK. And it's quite moody, so I like this. Go on, next, next. Let's do it. Right. Next one. Next so. one on. Right. OK, that was quite... That was quite... Are these all yours? Basically, yes. So I've, comp I've composed all of these pieces of music. OK, great. They, I prefer this one to the other one. Right, next. Go on. All right. Go on. Let's go. Oh, hello. Now we're talking. Oh, I think we might have a vibe here, mate. Yes. I mean, <laughs> crucially, crucially, whatever I rap is not going to go with any of this, but you're going to have to work your magic. Right, yeah. next. Get your views coming in, people. GB views at gbnews.uk. What shall I butcher? <laughs> to be honest with you, mate... Moody, bit moody. This reminds me of uni. <laughs> it's brought back a flashback, because, as we can all tell, on this particular night, I didn't remember much. Right, next. I like that, I like that. You like that one? Yeah. All right. Go on, what we got? Oh, this is far too upbeat for the yeah? catastrophe that I'm going to deliver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm giving a scathing attack on the British Last one. landscape. OK. <sighs> OK. OK, all right, fine. You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it up to you to decide, once you've heard this, this, I, this is... I regret writing this now. 
Once you've heard this, you dis you just decide, okay. right, which one to go for. And can I apologise in advance for what no I'm problem. pressing? Because a bit of context here, people, everyone who's uh, watching at home, um, or listening or online. Um, I was in quite a bad mood earlier, right? So I, I walked into the change room and they were like, oh, you've got to do a rap, right? And so I was a bit angry. I was angry at what was going on in the world and politics mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. So my rap reflects that. Right. Which now I don't feel like... So, anyway, how do I do this? Do I have to sing into so this microphone? you put the headphones on. OK. Put the headphones on. Yep. You basically right. point yourself that way what? and speak into the... Point yourself that way okay. and speak into the mic. Ready? Point myself... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, oh mate, this is, this is going to be so bad. OK, all right. <laughs> Welcome, people, to the last few minutes of me ever on TV. Do I just do this without... Sorry, if I'm shouting, it's because I can't hear anything. Um, do I just do this without music? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Right, I'll just So, basically, it. you're going to hear the beat. I'm going to hear the beat. You're going to hear the okay, beat like that. Right, let's have it. Right. Yeah, and you just speak. Yeah? I'll just speak. You just speak. You just, you just speak. Well, okay, mind people. You, mind you, the mm. beat is to a beat, so if you can count... If you can listen I to it... I think no beat it. No beat it. Just no, no beat, beat it. Right, let, me, okay. let, me, let me just... No this, problem. Right? OK, That's so... Ready? I'm into this mic. <clears throat> the channel is full of illegal immigrants. No matter who's in charge, it seems to make no difference. Truss and Quasi, they've been kamikaze. It's time to bring back Boris. But to sort this country out, we might need Chuck Norris. Militant lefties are all on strike. It's a cost-of-living crisis. That's just not right. It's time for robot trains. That's what I say. Unions get stuffed if you want more pay. I wish Prince Harry had never married. Duchess difficult. She's just typical. I can't stand the environmentalists. Get a job. You're just mentalists. If you're bored to death by the BBC, the answer is easy. Just watch me. The mainstream media is so old hat. GB News, that's where it's at. Yes. Was that all right? That was great. I mean, I know it wasn't. That was great. Right, OK. That was great. That okay. was great. That was better than advertised. Was it, really? Yes. Good grief. OK, fantastic. Right, so now you're going to go away. I'm going to go off. And yeah. I'm going to work my magic. You're going to work... You're going to have to work a lot of magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, most definitely. Just put Biggie over the top of it. Why not? Yeah, do it. That'd all right, look, thank you very, very much for this. This is fantastic. No and also, cheeky little plug, because you're going to be back on later. Yeah. If people want to, I don't know, have you DJing at parties? I mean, how do they do it? Uh, Instagram, Fargus Flicks. Instagram, Fargus Flicks. Yep. Uh, YouTube, Richie Fargus. F-A-R-G-A-S. There you go. Right, OK, cheeky little plug done. So when we come back, people... Well, later on, anyway, you are going to have immortalised my rap, right? Yes. Over a beat, and this is how we make our money, people. It's millionaire time. It's number one time. OK, there we go. Thank you very much, mate. You're a no legend. Worries. I'll see you later on. No All right, right, take it easy. All please, right. please, for the love of God, try and save my career. Coming up <laughs> in the second hour, I'd like to introduce you to the UK's smallest off-licence, that's right, as well as a lovely dog who's up for adoption. And, of course, you will find out how my attempt at drill rap... Can I just quickly, actually? What I did there... Right. ..was not drill. Was, well, I don't know what it was, but what, what is drill, just quickly? Is so, it... basically, drill is a type of music that originated from Chicago. OK. Uh, so, basically, the inner-city communities in Chicago... OK. ..had a theme type of music that sounded a certain type of way. OK, which is not that, is it? Let's Basically. be honest. Right, OK, good stuff, mate. Thank you very much. <laughs> OK, I think you can all agree that rap went really well. I will see you in a few. Stay tuned. All right. Weekday afternoons on GB News, we've got the whole of the UK covered. From 12 to 3, it's GB News Day with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Gloria De Piero. You'll get the very latest on everything that's been going on across our great nation. And from 3 till 6, watch out for GB News Live with me, Patrick Christie. I'm not here to mess around with all the biggest topics and guests. You will always be up to date. GB News Day and GB News Live from 12pm. Only on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB Plus Digital Radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune in apps. On your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of The People's Channel.
Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness, me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m., where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11 p.m. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11 p.m., seven nights a week. Hello, I'm Ada McGiven from the Met Office. Following Friday's lively weather, the wind, the rain, the showers, it's actually a fine start this weekend with sunny spells for most, but there is more wind and rain on the way. Another frontal system approaching, a deepening area of low pressure out in the Atlantic. Ahead of that, a ridge of high pressure builds in following Friday's active front, which still clears the southeast during Friday evening. But once that's gone, well, actually, the winds fall a bit lighter. We'll see clear spells in many places. Still a few showers into North Wales, northwest England, western Scotland, Northern Ireland. But elsewhere, with largely dry weather overnight and clear spells, lighter winds, temperatures in some sheltered spots around, say, parts of central England, east Wales, 2 to 5 Celsius. Nevertheless, a bright start to the day for many on Saturday. Still one or two showers for North Wales, northwest England during the morning. They tend to disappear into the afternoon, but they'll continue across the north of Northern Ireland and western Scotland through much of the day. Turning cloudier and breezier here, feeling cool, 12 to 14 Celsius. But elsewhere, long spells of sunshine, 16, 17, perhaps even 18 Celsius. So pleasant enough for October. Into the evening on Saturday, we'll see clear spells across much of England and Wales and light winds with that ridge of high pressure still holding firm. Under those clear spells, temperatures falling away. But for Scotland and Northern Ireland, a milder night because it's going to turn increasingly breezy and the cloud will build. In fact, for the Western Isles, the risk of gales or even severe gales as we start off Sunday, heavy rain pushing through and then an unsettled day expected for Scotland and Northern Ireland, a spell of wind and heavy rain for a time and that pushes into the far north of Wales and northern England by the end of the afternoon but further south it stays largely dry and bright with some sunshine. Monday looks drier and brighter for many, likewise for Tuesday. Welcome back, everybody, to Friday Night Feast with me, Patrick Christie's. Now we've got a jam-packed second hour for you. We've got a world record-beating unicyclist strongman. Yeah, you heard. An off-license being run out of a phone box. And, of course, it's Dog of the Week. That's right, everybody. We will also be playing my rap song. I am, by the way, as amazed as you are that we've not been taken off air yet. But anyway, <laughs> we're playing my rap song at the end of the show, so don't you dare go anywhere. All of that and much, much more after Tamsin does her thing over there. Patrick, thank you and good evening from the GB Newsroom. The Minister for Trade Policy, Connor Byrne, says he will fully cooperate with an investigation into allegations of inappropriate behaviour made against him. His comments come after he was sacked from the government after a complaint of serious misconduct earlier this week. The MP has had the party whip suspended whilst an investigation takes place. A spokesperson for Number 10 says the Prime Minister has been clear that the highest standards in public life must be upheld. 
The UK and Ireland have said they'll work towards resolving the stalemate over the Northern Ireland Protocol. Following a meeting of the British-Irish Intergovernmental Conference in London, both parties reaffirmed their commitment to reinstate an executive at Stormont by October the 28th. Irish Foreign Minister Simon Coveney said that conversations with Britain had improved and there was a genuine effort to solve the problems which had emerged after Brexit. A man armed with a knife has been shot dead by armed officers in a police station car park in Derby. Derbyshire Constabulary said officers were sent to the scene just before 10 this morning. The Independent Office for Police Conduct has been informed. Here's Deputy Chief Constable Kate Maynell. During the incident, a window was smashed at the police station. Armed officers were sent to the scene and a police firearm was then discharged. No officers, staff or other members of public were injured during the incident. It is not believed to be a link to counter-terrorism at this time, however, inquiries are ongoing. As you can see, a cordon is in place and Ascot Drive is currently closed and is likely to remain so while the investigation continues. The United Nations has passed a motion to investigate alleged human rights abuses in Russia. Nearly 50 countries brought the motion to appoint an independent expert, including Britain. The Human Rights Council accused Moscow of creating a climate of fear through repression and violence. But Russia says the motion contains false allegations. It's the first time an expert has been appointed to investigate the rights record of a permanent member of the Security Council. Liverpool has been confirmed as the host city for the 2023 Eurovision Song Contest. It beat Glasgow to host the music event next May. Ukraine won last year's competition, but organisers ruled it unsafe to host the show in the country. It was decided the UK would host the contest as Sam Ryder came second in the competition. TV online and DAB Plus Radio, this is GB News. Now it's back to Patrick. Hello everybody, welcome back to Friday Night Feast. We've got some great guests coming right up, but first, a big story I wanted to cover with my panel. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have taken legal action alongside other public figures against the Daily Mail over what they describe as a breach of privacy. So, this is Harry and Meghan, right? Allegedly, the company's activity includes having listened, uh, listening devices sorry, secretly placed inside people's cars, and homes. It's kind of like, I don't know, a modern phone hacking, isn't it? So a spokesman for the newspaper group ANL, which publishes both the Mail on Sunday and the Mail Online, said we utterly and unambiguously refute these preposterous smears, which appear to be nothing more than a pre-planned and orchestrated attempt to drag the mail titles into the phone... It's strong stuff, this. Drag the mail titles into the phone hacking scandal concerning articles up to 30 year old... Up to 30 years old, sorry. These unsubstantiated and highly defamatory claims based on no credible evidence... It is really strong stuff, this. Appear to be simply a fishing expedition. Wow, OK, right, so now... Obviously, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's heavy stuff, this. So I'll bring my, my wonderful panel in. Charmaine, I'll start with you. Uh, why do you think Harry and Meghan have decided to do this? Because my concern, well, not concern, really, I don't really wish them well at all, but is that it could go either way, right? So they might have to say, well, hang on a minute, we now have to admit that some of the stuff that you wrote about Meghan is true, but the only reason you could have got that is right. because you have, I don't know, bugged our house or whatever. So I'm quite surprised they've brought this up. I'm not. They love a they love a court case, don't they, Harry mm. and Meghan? They love it. They, they, not a day goes by when they're not suing somebody, um, and they want to be left alone. Just just stop suing people, and people will leave you alone. Mm. But uh, nevertheless, it's probably like a news of the world kind of situation where everyone's phone was being tapped, and then they all got paid out with massive court. Well, costs and the fees. thing is, can I can I just say sorry to interrupt, but but just just on that 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 legal statement was the first time I've read that out, and there's a lot of very 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 strong stuff in there. So. Mm. Bear in mind, that, that will have obviously... It says a spokesman, it's the lawyers, right? It's the lawyers, yes. so the Mail on Sunday and, and, and the Mail Online. They have... They could not have been stronger in refuting this. That's because they know it wasn't them, because we all know it's Netflix. 
Netflix, <laughs> are going, where's the series? Where's, where's the content? The series? It's they Spotify. They've snuck in. They've gone, look, this is the only way we're going to get it, Terry. And they've, like, wired up their houses. But hang on a minute. You've raised a cracking point there, right? Because for someone who wants to protect their privacy and for saying, oh, hang on a minute, you've got listening devices in our house, they are walking around with microphones and cameras, aren't they, Harry? Yeah, oh, constantly. Oh, every yeah. day, every day. They mic up. Yeah. And off they go. I mean, that's the only way they can make a living now because they're not part of the royal family. They've been cut off, basically. And now they've got to try and make a career out of being just victims now. Well, Elton John's got involved as well, a man who obviously loves privacy. Oh, he loves privacy. Well, the thing is... is Don't that mention it, by the way. When you read the list of things <laughs> that they're accusing the Daily Mail of doing, mm. you need a lot of stuff there. They're saying that there have been mm. people that have been paid to record conversations... Where is their evidence? Well, they've you been, need like, Amber Heard. Everybody's recording their conversations these days. I mean, that's what you do, isn't it? If you're mm. if you're young and and famous, you just record well, everything well, to use against somebody else. So go on. You were you were about you were in danger of giving us some much needed detail on this story. So carry on. <laughs> go on. Go on. So they have said that people were getting their medical records and their financial transactions through illegitimate means. Mm -hmm. So they're accusing the people who run the Daily Mail and the Mail on Sunday of getting people to pretend to be nurses, pretend to be doctors, and to, to get medical records mm -hmm. so that they can somehow build a scoop around that. Now, I'm sorry, but Harry and Meghan make enough gaffes by themselves. Yeah, yeah. Totally. You don't really yeah. need totally. to go digging. Yeah. It's kind of on a plate. Yeah, that's why Harry and Meghan need to just stop talking and then people will leave them alone because there's nothing to, to extract from them. It's really fascinating, though, because the thing is, right, phone hacking was phone hacking. Now, um, some people would say it was the bad old days. Some people might say it was the good old days. But I couldn't possibly comment. On this now, though, in this day and age, right, in this day and age... You are going to get found out. And I think the, the guttural elements of the press, which I used to think was actually quite good fun, right? The idea that, you know, like, <laughs> the sun would hire... Would, got people to get a job in um, Buckingham Palace. Oh. So they had plans, right? Yeah, this is, yeah, this yeah. is way back, this is way back. And um, so they get info, right? I love that. We don't need to do that anymore, right? There's no... I, I don't see the need for the Mail on Sunday or the Mail Online to have essentially hired a nurse to get a job in a hospital, trained to be a nurse, right? Yep. Get a job in a hospital just for the purpose of trying to access Prince Harry's medical records. It's going to be weird because that undercover operative, she's going to be on strike next week. She they're, is. They're not going yeah, to get yeah, yeah, she is. It's all going to go wrong. Yeah, she's the only one not on strike. She's getting paid on the <laughs> side. Yeah, no, exactly. Also, you shouldn't assume it's a woman. There we go, yeah. Very sexist of yeah, that. No, but, um, but yeah. No, do you have any sympathy for Meghan and Harry, though? Because, you know, I was going to say a camera doesn't follow me around all the time, but, um... Yeah. Bing! Yeah. Anyway, go on. No, I think... I do, do you know what? I really do feel sorry for Meghan and Harry. I know a lot of it they bring on themselves. Mm. Of course they do. But the, the, the bullying and... The, what bullying? I, one, her bullying. Well, it's a bit of both, really. I mean, she does bring it upon herself, but I think the press do go for her a lot. And I think if they just did a whole blackout and go, even if she said the most ridiculous thing in the world, don't publish it, because that's what, yeah. really what she does. They need a whole blackout on them totally. Well, that's what I get a lot, which is, like, why are you even talking about this? And I do it because it gets ratings. Um, but, <laughs> um, but, 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 yeah, do you have any sympathy for Harry and Meghan? Um, no, I don't. I understand what their situation is. Mm. And when you read the article... Which is what, exactly, sorry? Well, the, the situation <laughs> is that um, Harry was very jealous of the fact that he was number two. It's fair. He, he was. He was very right. jealous of the fact that he couldn't be the king, he couldn't be Do the you think? one... I don't know if he was. I met them when they were children once, and they were very bitter back then. When they, uh, yeah. About so, what? Each other? Yeah, they were just they were arguing all the time with it and, and yes. squabbling. And when I met them, yeah, when they were children. Really? I'm mm. sure that's completely but vanished. Children, the best. Um, <laughs> yeah. And th then he uh, met this uh, woman who seems to have problems with her memory. Like, yes. you know, I can, I, I often confuse when I got married. That's a common thing. Yeah. So. Or who married you? <laughs> or who or married under, you? Or where it was? Yeah. yeah. I, I get confused about what's said. All the time. Mm. So, Especially when you're in court. <laughs> so, um, they... And she sort of spurred him on to leave. And the problem is, is that they don't really have anything to sell. No, and I think it. that's what Netflix and Spotify I think he was are discovering. For a mum, actually. But I think she was, she was more of a mothering figure than she come is on, darling, really come not on. a mothering. She's not. That's the thing. She's not. And he's sort of gone to this sort of almost 
abusive relationship, I think. And, and I think a lot of the body experts and language experts... Did you say ..are that? saying that she's, like, pushing him and that she's the one that's mm. got her hand on top of his to show that she's far more dominant in the situation. Yeah, but that's because the idea is that he didn't want to be controlled by the royals, but now she is essentially controlling him well, and he's OK with nothing. that. This is the thing, anyway, we're going to have to move on, but I will, I will <laughs> have my say quickly, actually. They have got nothing. This idea you want to go your own way. OK, what's the product, right? Yeah. Meghan Markle now, you know, what, am I listening to her not interview Serena Williams because she's too busy talking about what, what What's that? Anyway, I'll tell you what it is, actually. Loads of money from Netflix, to be fair. But anyway, now, this... Or Spotify, whatever. Uh, now, this story is amazing. Jason Old, a 34-year-old Scot, broke the most niche world record that you could possibly think of. So he didn't lift the world's heaviest weight. Oh, no. He didn't just go the longest distance unicycling. No, that would be mental, right? No, he lifted the heaviest weight... Wow, unicycling. Oh, yeah. Talk about multitasking. He's even pushed a car while unicycling. There's nothing this man won't do. He joins me now. Good evening, Jason. How are you, mate? Good evening. I'm very well. Thank you for having me. So, the overarching question is why? Well, I would say the real question is why not? I like you, Jason. I like you a lot. <laughs> so, so, you, so, you decide... So, were you already a weightlifter? and a unicycler, just independently, and he thought, oh, I've got something going on here. Well, I've been a professional, I guess, stunt unicyclist for close to 15 years, performing, uh, providing entertainment at events from the worst village fits you can think of to the Formula One Grand Prix. So it's been quite a spectrum. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've lifted weights my whole life. Uh, I got introduced to it when I was playing rugby at school. Uh, I quickly tried to forget all of that because uh, it was just the older kids and they obviously had no idea what they were doing. But it was certainly a foundation uh, that I've, I've taken on. And, yeah, I just thought everyone's unicycling nowadays, aren't they? So you've got to stand out somehow. Oh, lovely stuff. Yeah. To be fair, at least you're not on a penny farthing, because I have... I don't, And I don't know why, by the way, Jason. I think it's just because Jeremy Vine's got one, actually. In fact, that's it. I don't like penny farthings. Anyway, um, so what did you actually have to do? Yeah, I said it. Uh, I said what we're all thinking. Anyway, what did you actually have to do, then? So you had... Well, I mean, I get the gist of it, mate, but how heavy was the weight and how far did you have to unicycle? So it was the... Sev uh, sorry, the heaviest single rep so all i had to do was take it from here and press it yeah. um and it was 68 kilos so if anybody can uh, i mean i wouldn't dare try and put a, a weight uh, on something or someone that's 68 kilos i'm about 77 kilos give it me give it me in, in stone give me an old money what's it in stone <laughs> Do you know? Roughly. Stone? Bloody hell, no is idea. Lot, I mean, yeah, right, let's okay, go so... with 20 stone. Good grief. OK, right, so talk me through... So did you have to drag a poor, poor bloke from the Guinness Book of Records to go and watch you do this, like some kind of weird sadomasochist? No, he forced himself oh. upon me. No, um, this was <laughs> this was this was during lockdown, so I had to send the... Uh, the evidence, if you will, myself. Although I did just break another world record. I don't know if you've noticed. It's accidentally in shot um, on Blue Peter on Friday. And there was a, a lovely adjudicator there. Uh, but I didn't know if he was a sadomasochist or not. No, uh, and, and well, I don't know. It was on the BBC, so probably. But um, so what was the other world record? Uh, so it's highest box jump from a unicycle. So essentially riding the unicycle forward, jumping off of it, and wow. landing on an elevated platform. Can I ask how you got into unicycling? Uh, so, really, just an attention seeker uh, who was looking for something, I guess, um, to stand out. But in all honesty, I guess also I was, I was somebody who was never very, very good at any one sport, but kind of quite fancied myself as all right at everything. And so I just tried a lot of different things. and. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it, it was just, just something different, and I, I don't know why I stuck with it, to be honest. I mean, it's got me on the news, so that's that's a good retrospective reason. But um, oh, well, it, well, it's not just got you that, mate. To be fair, look, I once tried to break a world record live on air here, which was the amount of pegs, clothes pegs, that you could um, get stuck on your face. And all that happened there was they just hurt. 
right? Um, so you are genuinely... I mean, you, seriously, every single time your head hits the pillow in the evening, you get to go, I've not just got one, I've got two world records. And all joking aside, mate, to be fair, that is pretty mega. So well done you, Jason. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate you coming on. You're going to get a round of applause. There you are. Hey, fantastic. Who says that unicycling doesn't get the ladies? Right, OK, fantastic. <laughs> Jason, well done, mate. OK. Shall I interview you? Have you done much unicycling? I can't say. I have. I have tried it. Have you? I have. I, I can't ride an actual yeah. bike, so it's pointless. I used to I used to work at Chesington World of Adventures many years ago Obviously. as an entertainer, and there were a lot of unicyclists and jugglers and all that kind of thing. And so, you know, when you're just chatting on a break, and it's like, can I have a go, please? Um, but no, I, I didn't. I, I couldn't keep my balance. What world record would you like to go for? Oh, I think it would be... Who can make the most fudge mm. in... <laughs> mm, I reckon I could give it five hours. I see how much fudge I can make in five hours. Is, could, no, but, but, yeah, but this is the point, right? Which is that, as far as I can see, <laughs> if you do something really obscure, like, let's be honest, Jason, bless him, the reason he's got the world record for that, as far as I can tell, is because nobody else has done that. Right? Yeah. So nobody else has bothered, and rightly so, by the way, nobody else has bothered <laughs> to try to lift what is the equivalent of about 11 stone whilst <laughs> unicycling, right? Because that would be mental, right? Yeah. So if you decided that you wanted to try to make as much fudge as possible yeah. in five hours, m no one's done that, right? I would imagine. Yeah, and like as many different flavors as possible. Oh, like no, there were. No, now you're, you're starting a challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. but yeah. you would have to. You'd have to because, like, I'm sure that there's been because people are always making like the biggest cake, the biggest hot dog. I'm sure somebody's Maybe made pizza. like the biggest lump of fudge. Yes. Okay. Good stuff. And we won't make the we won't <laughs> make the, we won't make the joke about the person who would have to put that fudge away. Right? They say that we won't make it. They say that the best things in life come in small packages. This is written by my girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, well, how about this for a little jam? Allow me to introduce you to the UK's smallest off license. That's right. Trading from a traditional phone box box. Easy, easy for me to say. In, sounds like a Binsley off license. <laughs> in Norwich, <laughs> Salt Press has rented the grade two listed red phone box in Tombland. Okay, and turned it into the beer hatch, stocking dozens of local. Br bring him up. Bring him up. The father of two hopes that it will. Be the local hotspot, despite the fact that its customers can't actually fit hey, inside. Yeah. Oh, you legend. Right, OK, fantastic. We've gone I from did. a unicyclist who lifts weight to this. And this is great. You are at the off-licence, aren't you? Pardon? You, you're at the off-licence, are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Tomb Land in Norwich. So, so, can you... Have you got your phone... Is it your phone that you're filming this on right now? Can it's we have a look through? Go on, walk us through the offie, mate. The beer hatch, right? <laughs> the beer hatch, yes. So I think it's UK's smallest off licence in a in a traditional red phone box. Fantastic. <laughs> and so, so again, why? Well, why not? That's uh, I think the same same reason the guy said before, isn't it? You know, if you can do something, why not give it a go? This is this is great. So, so were you just walking past a phone box one day and you thought I could stock that full of booze? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of. I saw them. Um, there's a company that deal with renting them out, and I saw it advertised. And I was doing at the time a kind of delivery, a beer delivery service, and uh, do local markets. So I thought, why not um, give it a go? See if I can open up an off license in a phone box, and uh, they let me. So. Here I am. I lo look, I love this, right? So basically, the overarching point there is you wanted to try it on and they let you do it, so now you've got to do it, haven't you? Now I've got to go through with it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all right. So, how's business? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it's, with any business, it's going to take a little while to build up the reputation, um, but I think I've got some quite good publicity from being a little bit quirky. Uh, Norwich is, you know, well known for its little quirky shops. You know, indeed, mate. So what do you sell? What's the range? So I deal with all local craft beers, real ales and ciders. So none of the big brands. It's all, you know, the smaller, smaller brewery, smaller cider places that, you know, don't get onto the supermarket shelves and some of the bigger stores. Um, so, yeah, yeah, smaller and I rotate my stock. Different, different beers, different breweries. Just try to keep things fresh, but keep things local. This is, I mean, brilliant. So do you just rely on passing trade? 
Yeah, yeah. So luckily enough, I'm right outside the cathedral in Norwich. That's where Tombland is. So I do get some, you know, local tourists coming by, coming to see me, see what it's all about. But also there's a lot of businesses, local businesses around. So people come on their lunch break, pick up some beers to take home after work. Yeah, after work. I'm sure it's after work. Um, OK, right, can you, could you, I don't know if it's possible this, can we have a quick look inside uh, for our radio? Uh, for we our can radio do. Listener. I have, uh, give me one second. Please, no phone box. Can we try it? Yeah, we're on, we're with you. Key out. OK, so we're <laughs> opening the beer hatch. Yeah. Go on, crack I should, I should have been prepared for this. But oh, well, I've been warned. OK. Oh. That's all right. Here we go. But unfortunately... Okay, at the minute, it's empty because it's night time. And I can't leave the beer in there overnight. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. You, you, you know what? So you got, fair, you got fair, so basically what you've just there. done is show me the inside of a phone box, to be fair, which, uh, which I didn't know. Which, uh, I have slept in a few. But, um, but so that's a really good point, actually, because if you left it in there overnight, I mean... Um, well, I mean, everyone would be straight around, wouldn't they? So, can I just say, good luck to you, mate, right? I think this is absolutely... Thank you very much. No, but I think this is brilliant, right? And for all the doom and gloom that we get, I mean, my normal show, 3 till 6, a cheeky little plug every single uh, weekday, apart from Fridays, actually. Exactly. So, come, come by in the day as well, and I'll show you what's inside usually. That's uh, it. Unfortunately That's for you, Saul, I am to. now off the booze. Otherwise... Well, you'd have you'd have a roaring trade, put it that way. But um, but but yes, I'm sure I can send some friends. Um, but Saul, so, thank you and good luck to you, mate. All right, this is great. All right, why not have a go? For all the doom and gloom in the world, here's a bloke who's turned a phone box into a booze hut. Well done. Yeah, it's fantastic, Saul. So, you legend. All right, mate. Okay, there we go. Well, that was something a bit different. Uh, Diane, what do you reckon? Uh, it's, it's, it's not the size, but it's how you use it, isn't it? Oh, it's always how you use it. It's, I mean, technique is so imp important. Mm. I love it because it's a little bit like my first off licence. Um, yeah. Because like, you don't want anything too big. You want to have something that yeah. you can manage, keep, keep track of the stock. Uh, I know that like, when I was younger, I was very fortunate. I had like a Barbie thing and it looked a little bit like a phone box. You open it and she's got her hair salon. Well, here you go. You've got yeah. my first off licence. And who's laughing now? Because <laughs> Barbie, as we all know, is in rehab. Um, so, <laughs> so, uh, so, no, but I mean, that's... That's, you know, good on him. I think good on him. A lot of these phone boxes are being used for other things now. There was one, um, well, <laughs> apart from that, there was uh, one, uh, I can't remember, there's uh, quite a few that are libraries now, little local yes. libraries. No. There's one in yeah. Brighton that's a coffee shop. And, you know, it's lovely, Obviously. I think, because we all love a red phone box. It's part of tradition, isn't it? It is. And we're like, they're vanishing on a daily basis because everyone has mobile phones. And well, there's no... literally no need for a phone box. There's no need also, for a phone no, box, no one, no one carries change it. for a start, yeah. right? Yeah. So you don't need to reverse change. the charges. Yeah, and, and we've all got phones or someone will give you a phone, so there's no real need. Well, like, could you... Like, what would you do if to, you had a phone box? Turn it into an off-licence. Right? <laughs> yeah, obviously. That's the only thing to do. Well, so I'd live in it. I would I'd have... live in it, and, yeah, so, but that's how I fall off the wagon. Anyway, right, <laughs> coming up, escape peacocks. That's right, you heard, escape peacocks. Terrorised residents of Plumstead in London. Scotland tries to cope with a sudden surge of stowaway cats. And, to the surprise of absolutely nobody. Google Maps is revealed to be an agent of the paranormal. It's almost that time for Round Your Parts. Hmm. Weekday afternoons on GB News, we've got the whole of the UK covered. From 12 to 3, it's GB News Day with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Gloria De Piero. You'll get the very latest on everything that's been going on across our great nation. And from 3 till 6, watch out for GB News Live with me, Patrick Christie. I'm not here to mess around with all the biggest topics and guests. You will always be up to date. GB News Day and GB News Live from 12pm. Only on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB Plus Digital Radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune in apps. On your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of the People's Channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch.
You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farrow. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11pm, seven nights a week. Welcome back, everybody, to Friday Night Feast. Now it's time for Round Your Parts, where we dig deep to find some of the absolute gems of local news. So, we start in Plumstead, which is apparently in south-east London, where a nightmare, a nightmare, a nightmare scenario is unfolding as residents are being terrified by an escaped peacock. Oh, when will it end? The peacock is owned by actor David Courtney. Anyone? Yep, I've worked with him. Who is he? He's, um... Allegedly an ex-gangster, but now he's an actor. What's he been in? I did a show with him um, a few years back called Back to 2025, and he 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 was a singer in it. And I, yeah, it's a so long story. So he's but an actor, right? Yeah, basically. Okay, no, fine, good stuff. <laughs> anyway, actor, world famous actor David Courtney. If you're watching, David, try harder. Who built a large enclosure for the bird with a high fence, but forgot to add a roof. Right. I didn't know they could... <laughs> oh, brilliant. I didn't know they could fly, said David, who told the Evening Standard I thought it was like a chicken or something. Like a fancy chicken. The bird is now known, excuse me, as the Plumstead Peacock and is running riot throughout the neighbourhood, particularly when he emits his loud mating call <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning. Well, we've all been there. We've all been there. Anyway, uh, what, what would you do in this situation? Well, I actually grew up near peacocks uh, and the mating call, would you like to hear it? Oh, yeah. It's like this. This is the male peacock mating call. Ah! Like, that that's is it. Yeah, that's literally how a peacock call. sounds. And Am so, I now supposed to do something? Uh, no, 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 no. That's, that's when they get the tail feathers out and then, then they go, ah! And they sort of sit there. Good grief. And that's a male call. What he should do is, is he it? should get a little girl. The jazz hands really added to that. <laughs> that male call, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, but those are my feathers, you see. Good stuff. So, so my mate's dad once went to the pub, got absolutely smashed and didn't remember buying four peacocks. Of As you Walker do. Or what was a traveller. And he put them in the boot of his car, right, and forgot about them. <gasps> right, and woke up the next day and opened the boot of his car and four... Well, I mean, his car was knackered. Um, and four peacocks went out and he just released them into the Cheshire country. Oh, they weren't so. dead then? No. Oh, thank goodness. Well, they're pretty hard now. They can fly very high, yeah. but they don't, they don't fly for a long time. But when you see a peacock swoop, it's quite right. majestic. It's very yeah, yeah. beautiful. I used to live next door, my next door neighbours, when I lived in America, used to have hmm. peacocks and they used to forget to clip their wings. Well, it's quite cruel. Oh, they no, I their don't think they should do that. And I know they shouldn't do that, yeah. but they didn't do that. And they used to come into our garden. And, and then when we used to have to run around literally with a net trying to catch them to give them back well, to Needed, you needed Diane because yes, you could just do the mating call. Exactly. Just Where were you when I needed you? <laughs> yes, exactly. Right now, for an extremely spooky tale that has uh, been a hotbed of sinister supernatural stories. That's right. Carlisle. Oh, I like Carlisle, actually. I used to live near there. Anyway, this concerns Carlisle mum, Leanne Cartwright. Classic Carlisle, Carlisle name, that cracking stuff, Leanne. Uh, who was captured twice by the cameras who were driven around capturing images of Google Maps. OK, so nothing too unusual there, you might think, except for the fact that Leanne was pictured in the exact same spot. I know. Standing in the same fashion <laughs> as well. God, great, look at that! So if you're listening on radio, Leanne's at the shop, big day out in Carlisle, this, and she's at a pedestrian crossing, right? And she's got a shopping bag, and, well, it's a woman holding a shopping bag. Anyway, once in 2009, and then again in 2018. Anyway, mind you, those traffic lights, well, they can take a while to change up north, can't they? <laughs> Dan, have you, uh, have you ever been on Google Maps? Oh, I've tried. I mean, I've run really around tried. chasing the you little car. 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 Yeah, clearly I'm in the wrong state. I mean, like, she's been doing brilliantly. I love... And, like, people have been writing to her saying, are oh, you a time traveller? Yeah, glitching the Matrix. Then, yeah, yeah, because Can you imagine, twice. by the way, can I just say, no disrespect to Leanne whatsoever, right, but if somebody had cracked time travel, right, <laughs> right <laughs> they would not send a lovely lady called Leanne, who looks like a Leanne as well, 
to Carlisle to stand outside a little. They wouldn't. No, you go back in time and kill Hitler. It's, I mean, but who discovered that, that she was in the same place all those years later? Google somebody, Maps. Google. I mean, what? Yeah, that's the point. Actually, how on earth did you do with himself? How does Leanne on Google? Right, we need to get her on next week. We're moving on now, people. We're moving <laughs> on. Even further north now to Scotland. Right, okay, where there has been a strange outbreak of cats travelling around undetected in cars. I know, I know. I'm as weirded out by this as you are. We start with a magnificent effort from one eagle-eyed tabby cat, Josie who somehow got under the car bonnet of garage worker Connor Crawford and made the 150-mile jaunt from Gateshead to Glen Road. So she's gone up in the world. Sorry, Gateshead. Uh, there is Josie, who jumped out. Uh, oh, oh, good grief. I hope she had oh, one. She was like that before she got yeah, in the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was already Yeah, she, she was already like that. They, they thought her eye was cancerous. They removed it four weeks. And How then... do you know this? Because she did her research before she I've came on the show. i read the story. <laughs> <laughs> do you mean you do work before this show? <laughs> oh, well, I'm actually... <laughs> I'm all about... I'm, I'm like Leanne. I'm, I'm actually psychic. She's a time traveller and I'm psychic. OK, so Gammy <laughs> Josie jumps out when Connor opened the bonnet after... Gammy. After noticing... She is Gammy. After noticing a, bur a burning smell. Good grief. Happily, uh, the other half, Denny, works as an animal care assistant, so she put the fire out, presumably. But there oh, we go. it was just her tail. Her tail got a little oh, bit singed. Right. Oh, dear. Yeah. She says she's got one eye and a burnt tail. Yeah, but she and had she's the one eye. Oh my god, new, Honestly, new you just record. Give up, wouldn't you? No, new record for the guy. He needs to like bring the cat back. Oh no, she's already travelled the 150 miles, but on a but, unicycle. Actually, hang on a minute. Has this cat person, on a unicycle? Has the has the person who drove the cat to Scotland not actually done the courtesy of driving the cat oh, back? Oh, the cat's gone back now. On, the cat's I'm gone just back. saying. Right, okay, there we go. Right, okay, moving on yet again. Literally the Next day, news emerged of another cat, Tia. <sighs> yeah, I won't make the Maria joke. Sneaking into a van and making the 100-mile journey from Oban to Arinagor in the Inner Hebrides. Oh, I prefer the Inner Hebrides to the Outer Hebrides. Anyway, that little trip involved a three-hour ferry crossing. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Oh, Charmaine, you got any pets? I used to. I, I haven't any pets now because I, they break, when they die, they break your heart. And especially like cats and dogs, and you have them for such a long time, and they become part of your family. Mm. So when they do pass away, it's like losing part of your family. And and, and well, my boyfriend will tell you, I cried for days and literally days and days. And, it, and, and Keep I, it so light. I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry to bring it down. <laughs> so basically, in a nutshell, <laughs> don't have any more pets. Uh, I had a cat. Yours, but he, Dad. He went on a gap year. I've never seen him again. <gasps> He's in Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I He's mean, I'm assuming tail. that's where he went. I've just bought a hamster. <laughs> Ooh, you? fun. Where's he going to go? It it's a she. Uh, it's Sheila. She Is she going to... Where do hamsters go? Like, Liverpool, do you reckon? I don't know. I don't know. But it's a Syrian hamster, so I'm doing my bit. <laughs> right, OK. So, it's time now for Christie's courtroom. Order, order. I'm not really now. Uh, the, first, <laughs> the first man in the dock today. This is right. And, and bits of context, people, right? So, Christie's courtroom, what I do now is I basically pick three people-ish, who have been in the news this week, right? And uh, we decide whether or not they're guilty or not guilty of a particular crime. So the first man in the dock today is someone who often finds his way into the headlines, and it's Tesla boss Elon Musk, mm. who, unva oh, who unveiled his plan for peace between Russia and you. I mean, he also bought Twitter, really, but anyway. Who unveiled his plan for Russia and Ukraine. So here is what Musk put to his Twitter followers in his peace plan poll. So he says... Uh, there we go. You can read that. I actually can't, but there we go. Ukraine, Russia, peace. There we are. Right, OK, so he's been criticised now because apparently it involves conceding some Ukraine territory to Russia. It's an interesting one, this, right? So, anyway, President Zelensky then released his own poll with Twitter users voting overwhelmingly. They preferred Musk. Where are you go What's going on here? Preferred Musk's <laughs> idea of Ukraine. The Kremlin backed Musk's poll. Well, obviously the Kremlin backed Musk's poll. I've got a gavel now. There we are. Uh, right, so, so what we're deciding now is, is Elon Musk, the world's richest man, guilty or not guilty of being a useful idiot for the Kremlin? I would say that he's definitely guilty. This is an appalling state of affairs. And he he never bought Twitter, and now he blames the fact that the poll didn't go his way. Because he put a, a poll out to his Twitter followers mm. saying, do you agree with me? 60% said no, and he said, ah, oh, see, it's all the Twitter bots. Now, there is a tinfoil hat theory that says the only reason why he made this ridiculous statement and put the poll out is to prove there are all these bots on Twitter, and therefore... He just tweeted something. 
he argues, he, he wins his argument. Because you know right now, the reason why he said he didn't buy Twitter is because yeah. there are too many bots and they wouldn't disclose that. Right. So he's trying to get out of sort of eight, I think it's eight million, eight billion pounds of legal fees for this. So you think that Elon Musk is guilty of being a... I think he's very guilty of a lot of things. You? I think he's guilty too, I'm afraid, because quite honestly, I think he thinks because he sent a few satellites up in the air and he's, you know, invented a couple of cars, then he's the king of the world now and well, he's he can pretty, solve everything. Yeah, but I'm he can solve what everything. have you done? You know, no offence, but I mean, I'm, I do nothing. <laughs> I sit here, I read this, I read this, I hold a gabble, which, to be honest with you, this feature doesn't work. I've not even got my wig. <laughs> but, um, you know, Elon Musk does space stuff. He, he does He does invent cars. He's the world's richest man. I, yeah, yeah he does. doesn't make him intelligent. But what... I think, it, I think it does. Well, no. He's just... He's well, got it obviously that does. do stuff for him. You know, and it, you know, I'm not being funny, but you don't just go... I mean, if it was if it was that easy, right, I'd be the world's richest man. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'd be parents, dead in a week. His parents were rich already. Not that... No, he yeah. is very clever. Do you get what but you But he yeah. does over-promise a lot of yeah. things, so that's one thing that you have to... Heard. You have to bear that in mind with Elon Musk. <laughs> The notoriously <laughs> litigious Amber Heard, may I remind you? So let's just steer clear of that. OK, so both of you think Elon Musk is guilty of essentially working for the Kremlin, so now he's litigious. Guilty. Right, there you go. OK, and next. Down. Next. Right. The final defendant, oh, it's quick, in Christie's... Because there's normally three, what's going on? In Christie's courtroom, uh, we discussed earlier, it's the Sussexes, it's Meghan and Harry. There we go. New portraits of Meghan and Harry have been released soon Ooh. after Buckingham Palace published... Really? Mm. Uh, published an image of the Fab Four, King Charles, Queen Consort Camilla, and of course Prince <gasps> and Princess of Wales. Well, the Sussex photographs were taken by celebrity photographer Meeting <laughs> Harriman. <laughs> You're right there. <gasps> director of the yeah, I know. Right, director of the South Bank Centre and a close personal friend of the couple. I think that photo says. Well, what do you think it's... OK, so if you're listening... Right, if you're listening on radio, Meghan Markle, bright... Bring it back up. Meghan Markle, bright red dress, right, OK, and Harry behind her in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And, right... There and, is. Yeah, so all also... language experts would, would speak... Well, and say, what? Look, she's, again, she's holding court, she's in front, it's all about Meghan, and he's behind going, can oh, I, I just follow you. Can I ask a very honest question, which I don't think has been asked enough on national media? Why is Prince Harry such a simp? Oh, oh, um... Like, seriously, he's degrading himself. No, <laughs> yeah, no, no, come you're on. Right, you're right, you're right. Come on. Look, I, look I, I love my girlfriend, right? I love her, and there's, there's loads of stuff that I do for her. I wouldn't overtly, ritualistically degrade myself in public, just castrate myself in public. Now, I think she tells him off all the time. It's like, no, no, you, you stand behind me, Harry, because it's all about me, because I was in a... Can you imagine oh, no, the conversation? No, no. Show. It's the way it's sold to him. His perspective is that if yeah. I push... Yes. If I push her forward, mm. I therefore am coming forward because I am showing, look, at how I treat my uh, woman and uh, its equality and I'm pushing her agenda forward. We've but got something to say. I don't think it comes across like that, does it? No, it no, comes across like He a looks... Yeah, I'll be yeah, honest 100%. with you, in that photo, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting it's photo. Pathetic. I don't know why they've lit... One of his arms is lit, it's so the suit looks like it's made of two I'm not being, No, but hang on a minute. Let's flip it on its head, right? <laughs> if you were Meghan Markle, you would not want that for your husband, would you? No. Right? Can you imagine? I would go out of my way, right? So if this was me and my missus now and it was like, Patrick, would you mind just standing at the front, OK, in a power pose, and could you just have your girlfriend behind you in the shade? I'd say no. I'd say no. no. I'd say I yeah. think, I, I think that's... I'd say I think that's a bit weird. I don't want it. That's not... You know, and I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not exactly a rampant feminist. I'm just saying that's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. A lot of their pictures that, are like right? that. A lot of their pictures, their publicity pictures are like that. He's always standing in the background. She's always, like... It's pathetic. Me. It, it, well, it's, my not, it's not a balanced relationship. You can, you can almost tell that from the photographs that they have. A good photo needs to tell a story. And what wow. this story is, is that Harry looks like he's thinking about murdering someone and he's happy at the thought. He has got serial killer eyes in that picture. So, are <laughs> Meghan and Harry guilty of... Uh, what am I doing now? Yes, are Meghan and Harry guilty or not guilty of deliberately stealing the Fab Four's thunder? Because that picture came out just before the Fab Four's guilty. Came out. Guilty? Guilty. guilty. No, you need to have thunder to steal it. No thunder. No crime. Oh, Ooh. no thunder. No thunder, no crime. Don't tell ACDC that. OK, so it's a hung, it's a hung jury. Oh. Um, oh, guilty, guilty, guilty. <laughs> right, OK, fine, done, right, done, done, done. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just the right side of copyright law, it's time for this.
That's right, post-person Pat. I don't need a black and white cat. I'm legally not allowed one, otherwise it does become liable. Anyway, it's now time for post-person Pat. Blimey, lots of you have been getting in touch. Commenting on the blackouts we might face, Steve says, I'm a 70s baby, so I don't mind. Already dug a box of candles out for <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Steve. If the blackouts take place, though, is the government ready for the baby boom in nine months? Woo! So true! It's so true! Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Liz Trust wanted to go for growth. Black us all out. Baby city. <laughs> right, OK, Dorothy says, I think most of us will be careful about the energy we use because of the cost. Yes, like adults. Exactly. Dorothy, thank you. Maybe blackouts won't be necessary. Is that Dorothy? Yes, Dorothy. Dorothy, can I just say, Dorothy, thank you, OK? Because for too long, I think, we've just infantilised people, right? Mm. You need to be told what to do all the time. Mm. Can we, are we beyond the idea now that you can just go, right, things are a bit tight, leave the lights off unless you really need it? Yeah, right. yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we are adults. I do do that. Well, yeah, but, and I'm very much. Well, I do that anyway. The skyscrapers. It's all the skyscrapers. People need to turn out the lights in the skyscrapers. That would save so much. It would. It go. would. It would. Yes, absolutely. You solved it. You big lefty. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, so on, on nursing. Uh, what's this one now? On nursing. Uh, oh, nurses being told to strike. Paul's been on. Yes, Paul. Okay. So if you ban nurses from striking, you must ensure that they do not suffer financially. Can you promise that? Literally not my job, Paul. <laughs> no, it's not my job. Um, no, but I do take your point, right? I do take your point. OK, this is... So this is in relation to what we spoke about before, which is, uh, well, the nurses' strike. So nurses potentially will go on strike uh, in about a month or so if they vote for it. And it's over pay, OK? So uh, I said earlier on, I think that nurses uh, should be banned from going on strike, not because I hate nurses, right? That would be weird, but because... Um, I think people will die, right? And, and I think there are some jobs, right, that you should maybe, if you're going to ban striking, maybe nursing is one of them. Anyway, uh, Paul wants me to personally vouch for the fact that nurses will be financially remunerated. Um, all right, fine, I'll just pay him nothing and pay him that. Sharon <laughs> says, uh, who's been a... Oh, Sharon's been a registered nurse for over 30 years. Uh, they've got in touch. Says, We've had... Two pay rises in two years. However, we didn't get one for eight years. I get 34k a year. I also pay 9.8% into my pension. Not a golden handshake. I feel we need more pay, but now's not the right time. Sharon, thank you very much. And yes, look, I would like to say as well, look, you know, you know me, everybody. I like to, you know, give things a bit of oomph, right? So yes, I can be a bit controversial at times. I absolutely do not hate nurses, right? There's nothing to do with that whatsoever. It's just the fact that is now, as Sharon, who is a nurse, mm. says, is now the right time to go on strike and demand more pay. I, I, well, look, I've said no, in my opinion. So what do you make of that? Anyway, right, thank you very much, Sharon. And on my licence to drill, there we go, Mandy says... That was actually awesome. The new Stormzy, yes. <laughs> so if you missed it, if you missed it, if you missed it, I did a rap earlier. I'm going to be doing a rap again. Really, really good, though. Can't wait to hear a beat to it. I certainly can. Coming up after this break, we have our national treasure and... Dog of the Week. That's right. Hopefully this one doesn't bite. Don't go anywhere. Weekday afternoons on GB News, we've got the whole of the UK covered. From 12 to 3, it's GB News Day with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Gloria De Piero. You'll get the very latest on everything that's been going on across our great nation. And from 3 till 6, watch out for GB News Live with me, Patrick Christie. I'm not here to mess around with all the biggest topics and guests. You will always be up to date. GB News Day and GB News Live from 12pm. Only on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB Plus Digital Radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune in apps. On your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of the People's Channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. 
Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m., where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11 p.m. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11 p.m., seven nights a week. Now, it's time for this week's national treasure, everybody. Before his death from a brain tumour in 2011, 11-year-old Harry Mosley had made... This is fantastic, this. £750,000 for Cancer Research UK. An amazing achievement. What an incredible achievement. The inspirational youngster, having become well-known on social media as well, really, really did his bit to try to help people, obviously, who were suffering. Well, Harry's mother, Georgie, turned the Help Harry Help Others project into a charity, which has now gone on to raise more than three million pounds. I mean, this is incredible, OK? So tomorrow will be the 11th anniversary, very sadly, of Harry's death, and Georgie will address the crowd in Birmingham City's match, at Birmingham City's match tomorrow, to mark the poignant occasion. Georgie is with us now. You're this week's national treasure. Firstly, you get a round of applause on the way in. Well done. Now, can I just say, Georgie, look, I'm, I'm, it's a really difficult one, this, obviously, because at the same time as it being such an amazing achievement and wanting to be really happy about it, of course, something incredibly tragic happened. So, uh, how are you, first and foremost? Are you OK? Pretty rubbish this time of year, you know, as you can imagine. It's um, 11 years, which means tomorrow, which means Harry's been gone his entire lifetime. So... As a family, that's really, really difficult. But obviously, we're very proud of Harry, all of his achievements, and what he's still helping, you know, to this day, 11 years on, he's still helping so many families out there, which I think is pretty good going as a council estate boy, you know? Well, hey, absolutely. And saving lives as well. And look, I'd just like to say as well, I think I speak for everyone who's watching this, to just say, obviously, incredibly sorry for your loss. But at the same, at the same time... You know, I, I mean, it, it's an amazing thing that's come out of this, right? This has the money raised, the lives saved, etc. So just talk us through about, um, is it Help Harry Help Others? Is that right? Go on, talk us through it. Yeah. yeah, so Help Harry Help Others was started by Harry when he was nine. Um, and he decided to make BD bracelets. Uh, which I'm wearing right now, uh, ready for the blues tomorrow. Um, he raised, as you said, the, you know, the £750,000 for other charities. But we now, as our own registered charity, uh, run a drop-in cancer support centre. We help over a, over a thousand families. Although we're based in Birmingham, we are national. Um, we help Cure, where we give money to research. We help cope, giving grants to families suffering financial hardship, and we help Care, which is the centre where we offer 20 services on site. And really, we support the mental well-being of cancer patients and their families, um, supporting adults and children, patients, relatives, carers, siblings, work colleagues, because it doesn't just affect the patient, no. it affects everybody. No, absolutely. And it literally person. does affect everybody, though. This is the thing. So, it's some, look, last time I checked, it was something like one in three people get cancer. That number's probably going to rise a bit. And it's and, and that means it affects everyone. Because one in three people, the three of us sat here right now, for example, so one of us, sorry, uh, probably me, let's be honest with you. Um, and and, and this, is, this is the thing. And so it's the families, it's everything, right? Uh, can I just say, so, how can people donate? Come on, I mean, I mean to be fair, you've... you've I was going to say you've already raised enough. You can never raise enough, right, for this thing. But how can people donate? How can they get in touch? And how can they uh, give you give you some wonga? We'd love people to donate. It's been very ah. hard through the pandemic, as you can imagine, and it still is. So please visit hhho.org.uk and click the donate button. And look, thank you so much for making the time for us on this show. And um, I, look, good. Well, I don't know what to say really. I mean, not good luck for tomorrow. But I hope I, I hope um, you manage to get through what must be a very difficult time for you and difficult date. So all the best, and uh, and we're, we're all thinking of you. So thank you very much, and keep up the good work. All right, you are this week's national treasure. Right. Okay. Right. We're moving on now. I mean, that by the way, can I just say that was incredibly touching. Actually, I'm really, really. 
Powerful stuff, really. But uh, let's go now to uh, a different element of the show. So a bit of a gear change, this, people, because it's time now for... Dog of the Week! That's right, where we rehome, or try to, you heartless people. You've only rehomed two so far. <laughs> anyway, rehome a rescue dog. Now, since we've been doing this, the lovely German Shepherd, whose name escapes me, that's how lovely she was, has been rehomed. Uh, I am hoping that we can double that total tonight. Uh, bear in mind, we've been doing this show now for months, and we do it every week. And one, one of you, one of you, right, has rehomed a rescue dog. Is that the best you've got, Britain? Right, anyway. Um, this is a dog who's currently living at the... Oh, grief. The North Clued Animal, yeah, Animal Rescue Home. Uh, Elle is... Oh, oh, Elle is there. And uh, Elle came in as a stray after being found dumped in a park with her brother. Her brother found a foster home, but Elle was at the home for a little while. When she did find a new home, uh, she was brought back to the rescue after six weeks due to a change in personal circumstances. Oh. That's, That's a shame. That's a shame. Right. Elle is now... One year old. Look at this dog. People, if you cannot rehome this dog, it ticks all the boxes. It's one year old. It's absolutely flipping gorgeous, right? Despite all that she's been through, she loves people. And her favourite thing to do is be around other dogs. What's not to love? Now, with us now to tell more about this is uh, Becky, who is kennel supervisor in... I'm very sorry, Becky. How do I pronounce North Clued? <laughs> it's Cluid. Oh, oh, fair enough. Okay, fair enough. Uh, right. So, tell me a bit about Elle. So, um, well, as you say, she came in. Um, I say stray. wasn't really a stray. She was dumped. Um, she was uh, when she first came into us. A pair of them, her and her brother, could barely stand. Um, they were in our vets for quite a few days on a drip, and um, it was really touch and go as to whether they'd actually survive. But they both of them managed to pull through, and then obviously. Bruiser found his home really, really quickly. The foster home did actually end up adopting him. Um, he, she, he's just absolutely beautiful. Considering what she's been through, she just absolutely loves life. She loves people. She loves other dogs. She's quite scared, uh, quite a lot. Um, so in sort of new circumstances, she she gets a bit fearful. So we would be looking for a home really with another dog, um, because she takes a lot of confidence when she's like mixing with other dogs and things like that. Absolutely. Look, this is um, fantastic. I and mean, this dog, for one of my best phrase, sells itself, right? OK, because uh, can, I, can I ask, is, is, Elle, is Elle there or not? No, no Elle. No Elle. Elle isn't, no, Elle isn't here. She's, no. I'm at home. Um, right, but, home. yeah, she's yes, in the channel, unfortunately. Quite on a Friday night, yes. <laughs> weird if it's work, actually. Anyway, right, how can people get in touch? Sorry, this is short and sweet, by the way. How can people get in touch if they want okay. to rehome Elle, OK? Um, we've got a website, North Cluid. If you type in North Cluid Animal Rescue into Google, it will come up, or it's ncar.org.uk. Oh, my gosh. I, I, oh, OK. Well, Ella's melted our hearts, and um, we will... We, will, we need to get you back on. I really appreciate it. These are these people, OK, right, that really, 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 for me, help Britain be a great country, right? Look at look at Becky here. Friday night, right? It's just about to go 9 p.m. Bless her. She's you know who could care more about animals? Let's go get this dog at home, people. Come on, do your bit, right, <laughs> Becky? Thank you so so much. Great to have you on. We need to get you back on again soon, right? For a little bit longer. I'm sorry, it's very rushed. I've been I've, I've messed up my time. Okay. Anyway, Becky, thank you very much. <laughs> so right earlier in the show, in response to a challenge from a viewer, and can I just say thank you? To that viewer, <laughs> I recorded a bit of a rap song. Yes, it's time to find out how it all worked out. I mean, terribly. We know how it worked out. Let's play it. The channel is full of illegal immigrants. No matter who's in charge, it seems to make no difference. Trust and quality, they've been kamikaze. It's time to bring back Boris. But to sort this country out, we might need Chuck Norris. Militant lefties are all on strike. It's a cost of living crisis. That's just not right. It's time for robot trains. That's what I say. Unions get stuffed if you want more pay. I wish Prince Harry had never married. Duchess difficult, she's just typical. I can't stand the environmentalist. Get a job, you're just mentalist. If you're bored to death by the BBC, the answer is easy. Just watch me. The mainstream media is so old hat. GB News, that's where it's at. That's where it's at, right, OK. Oh, that's where it's at. Wow. That's where it's at. Um, that was... I... I... When you hear it back, you realise... <laughs> I mean, it's the most right-wing rap song that the world has ever seen, isn't it? I think 
Yeah, it is. It is. I, 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 I mean, the, I first, the first line, I've managed to rhyme illegal immigrants with the word different. Yeah. But, so, there we go. But right. I wouldn't give up the day job. Uh, job <laughs> I think the day job might give up on me after that. But there we go. Right, look, thank you very much, both of you. Great to have you both on the show. Much appreciated. We are bang out of time, people, OK? So, thank you so much for tuning in. We normally do Taxi for Christie's, but I have absolutely butchered the running order on this show, so we don't have time. Mark Dolan will be with you after this very, very short break with the core of a show. Have a great weekend, people. Love you lots. Mwah. Hello, I'm Ada McGiven from the Met Office. Following Friday's lively weather, the wind, the rain, the showers, it's actually a fine start this weekend with sunny spells for most, but there is more wind and rain on the way. Another frontal system approaching, a deepening area of low pressure out in the Atlantic. Ahead of that, a ridge of high pressure builds in following Friday's active front, which still clears the southeast during Friday evening. But once that's gone, well, actually, the winds fall a bit lighter. We'll see clear spells in many places. Still a few showers into North Wales, northwest England, western Scotland, Northern Ireland. But elsewhere, with largely dry weather overnight and clear spells, lighter winds, temperatures in some sheltered spots around, say, parts of central England, east Wales, 2 to 5 Celsius. Nevertheless, a bright start to the day for many on Saturday. Still one or two showers for North Wales, northwest England during the morning. They tend to disappear into the afternoon, but they'll continue across the north of Northern Ireland and western Scotland through much of the day. Turning cloudier and breezier here, feeling cool, 12 to 14 Celsius. But elsewhere, long spells of sunshine, 16, 17, perhaps even 18 Celsius. So pleasant enough for October. Into the evening on Saturday, we'll see clear spells across much of England and Wales and light winds with that ridge of high pressure still holding firm. Under those clear spells, temperatures falling away. But for Scotland and Northern Ireland, a milder night because